Hi everybody, I hope you're having a good week. Uh, what we're going to do here is continue our uh, series on Bode plotting. And in particular, we're going to talk about complex zeros and uh, poles. So sometimes those are called quadratic zeros and poles. So this is going to follow a lot, uh, in, in, or at least draw from portions of the document that I provided that uh, really bears out the mathematics behind the, the different representations. So if you recall, in that uh, document, we had something for the quadratic zero that looked like h of s equals a s squared plus b s plus c. Okay, so that probably looks like a normal second degree polynomial. And you learned a long time ago how to factor that polynomial and that there's going to be situations where you might have real uh, roots or quad, uh, complex roots. The quadratic roots will always appear as complex conjugate pairs as long as the coefficients a, b, and c are real valued. And they will be real valued for our purposes in this course. Okay, so keep that in mind. So if you recall, one of the manipulations that we did to this ended up looking like something like c onto an expression that looked like s squared plus 2 zeta omega, uh, omega naught s plus omega naught squared divided by omega naught squared. So the substitutions we needed for that were omega naught squared equals c over a and zeta equals b over the quantity square root 4ac. Right, so those are uh, how we relate our original coefficients a, b, and c to the terms we have in our modified expression. Now, from there, what I, I, I made a, a note that this c term here, we're going to forget about that, essentially. And it's not that it's not there, but we can factor it out when we reduce the expression to this form, which is more closely to what we want to manipulate. And uh, so when we do that, this c term just becomes a constant value, and we already know how to deal with the Bode plot of a constant. Okay, so we'll circle back to some of that later as we look at some examples. So our modified transfer function is going to look like h of s equals s squared plus 2 zeta omega naught s plus omega naught squared divided by omega naught squared. And then we're going to make one other change to it. Uh, well, I guess a couple more changes to it. But one of them is going to, we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator both by omega naught squared. So it's going to get rid of the term in the denominator, just make that a 1. And we'll end up with s squared over omega naught squared plus 2 zeta omega naught over omega naught squared times s plus 1. And then we're going to continue manipulating that. We're going to use the, the s equal j omega. So we're going to end up with h of s equals j omega quantity squared over omega naught squared plus 2 zeta omega naught over omega naught squared onto j omega plus 1. Okay, so we've kind of expanded that out a little bit, and now we're going to make a few more algebraic adjustments. Okay, so continuing on, we're going to be say, we're going to be able to say that this equals negative omega over omega naught, that quantity squared, plus 2 zeta omega over omega naught times j, and then plus 1 which we can then rearrange to be 1 minus the quantity omega over omega naught squared plus j times 2 zeta omega over omega naught. So this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part of our transfer function. So now we want to look at computing the magnitude and phase of that. Since we have it in rectangular form, we want to convert it to polar form. And so we're going to say that the magnitude of h of j omega is, well, we have the, uh, 
real part and the imaginary part. So we're just going to do what we've always done. We're going to say this is the square root of the quantity 1 plus omega over omega naught squared squared plus 2 zeta omega over omega naught squared. And then the square root of that entire expression. So for the phase we're going to have the angle of h of j omega is just going to be the inverse tangent or arc tangent of the quantity 2 zeta omega over omega naught divided by 1 minus omega over omega naught quantity squared. Okay, so it's going to be that arc tangent. And by the way, I noticed this should be a negative here. So that is a negative. Sorry about that. Something to note about this arc tangent here is the uh, we want to make sure that we pay attention to the quadrant here. So pay attention to the quadrant when we're doing that arc tangent. Okay, so first we're going to deal with the situation when omega is much smaller than omega naught. That is an omega there, which means that omega divided by omega naught is going to be approximately zero. So when that's the case, this term here is going to look like one minus zero, which is one squared, which just looks like a one. And this term here is also going to look like uh, a zero. So what that's going to lead to is the magnitude of h of j omega is going to be approximately 1 over, I don't have to make it that big, 1 over the square root of 1, which equals 1 in unitless measure, and that tells us that's going to be 0 dB. Right, so that looks familiar. So it's a more complicated expression. This whole thing is more complicated, but it still gives us zero dB when omega is much lower than omega naught. Okay, so now we're going to look at the phase, right? So here we're going to have the same kind of thing going on. We have uh, h of j omega is approximately equal to one. So that means the angle of h of j omega is going to be zero degrees because one is one at zero degrees. So that's a pretty easy manipulation to do there. Another way to arrive at that is if we know that the numerator here is zero and we're dividing by one, we know that the arc tangent of zero is zero degrees. So now for the case where omega equals omega naught, then we know that omega over omega naught equals one precisely. Right, so that means our magnitude, h of j omega, is going to be, well, if this expression here, omega over omega naught, is 1, then this whole expression here goes away. That's going to be 0. And so we're going to be left with something that looks like the square root of 2 times zeta times 1 that quantity squared, which is just going to be 2 zeta. And zeta is always going to be a non-negative number, so it could be zero or positive. All right, so uh, from there, then that's going to be the unitless value. So in dB, we're going to have, um, I'll go ahead and say this is going to be unitless. And so in dB, we're going to have 20 times the log base 10 of 2 zeta. So let's think about what happens here. So when zeta is 0, then the logarithm is actually not defined, but we're going to say that it's going to be uh, negative infinity decibels, right? So when zeta is 0, then this 0 is going to have a magnitude that is negative infinity. And obviously, if zeta is non-zero, then this value is just going to be 
whatever this calculation leads to. So that's something that it's zeta specific. And so we can't really put a generality to it there other than for when it is zero. Uh, although we could say one thing about when it's one half. So let me summarize that a little bit. So um, for zeta equals uh, zero, then it is negative infinity dB. For zeta equals uh, one half, then actually what we're going to have is this expression is going to evaluate to one, and so we're actually going to be at zero dB. So there is an interesting uh, situation for zeta equal one half. And as zeta gets larger uh, beyond that, then actually the 20 times the log base 10 of something that gets larger is just going to be unbounded. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so next we got to deal with the phase. And so for omega over omega naught equal 1, right, this condition here, then we're going to find out that we're going to have a 2 zeta in the numerator and a 0 in the denominator for our arc tangent. But if we... Uh, Think a little bit about what that looks like. It's going to look like a J term, which is just going to have a phase of plus 90 degrees. So the angle of H of J omega for this case is just going to be positive 90 degrees. Okay, so now we want to talk about what happens uh, when, in the case when omega is much larger than omega naught. And so in this situation, we're going to see that we have an omega naught, or I'm sorry, omega over omega naught term here that is uh, increasingly larger, and it's squared. And if we take that squared term and add 1 to it, we really, really don't change it very much. But then when we square it again, we get something to the fourth power, which gets larger, even larger, faster. Matter of fact, it will dwarf this expression here, which is just a something proportional to omega over omega naught squared. So what we're going to do, again, we're looking at an approximation here, but what we want to see is that the magnitude of H of J omega under these case under this case is going to be approximately equal to the quantity omega over omega naught to the fourth power square rooted, which is going to give us omega over omega naught quantity squared. All right, so that's what it's going to be in a unitless measure. Remember, unitless. And we want to look at what's going to happen in uh, dB. So the gain in dB is going to be it's going to be 20 times the log base 10 of this value, so it's going to end up being 40 times the log base 10 of omega minus 40 times the log base 10 of omega naught. All right, so what we'll see, this is a constant, okay, so it's going to move the plot up or down depending on omega naught's value, um, generally down because unless omega naught is smaller than 1. All right, so then this term is the one that where, where the magic happens, so to speak. So it's going to increase every time omega increases by a factor of 10, we're going to increase the gain by a factor of 40 dB or by an amount of 40 dB. Okay, so it's going to have a positive 40 dB per decade slope. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. For the phase, we're going to have something that essentially boils down to the angle of h of j omega, and again, this is an approximation here, and there, uh, it's going to look like the arc tangent of something that is close to 2 zeta over the quantity negative omega over omega naught squared. Okay, and so that's going to give us something, right, omega over omega naught, that's going to be increasingly large, Okay, so that means this entire expression is going to tend towards zero, but it's going to come in from the negative side because we have this negative term here. So we're going to say that's going to give us something that looks like approximately 180 degrees. Okay, so to summarize, for omega much less than omega naught, 
we have the magnitude is going to be approximately 0 dB and the phase is going to be approximately 0 degrees. For omega equal omega naught, the magnitude is going to be 20 times the log base 10 of 2 zeta. And so that is a zeta-dependent uh, expression. Uh, it can be negative infinity, which actually is undefined, but uh, we, can, we can fathom what that is. It can be negative infinity in dB, and it can be unbounded in the positive direction. And the phase is going to be plus 90 degrees. And then as omega is much larger than omega naught, the magnitude is going to be 40 times the log base 10 of omega minus 40 times the log base 10 of omega naught. And the phase is going to equal plus 180 degrees. Okay, so let's plot that. We're going to have our magnitude axis here. Okay, this is log omega, like always. And over here, we have our gain in dB. All right, so I'll go ahead and mark on here. This is going to be our omega naught. And based on our approximations, we're going to say that we have something that looks like, let me pick a color here that's going to come out. The straight line approximation is going to come out here. It's going to be 0 dB all the way out to omega naught. And then it's going to increase from there at a slope of plus 40 dB per decade. Now the important thing to note here is what happens right here at omega equals omega naught is this can actually be a pretty deep valley. Uh, let me fix that up a little bit here. So let's clean that up and go back to my, we'll say that's omega naught. And so we can have a deep notch or a valley essentially right here at omega equals omega naught, and uh, that's going to affect the overall shape of this depending on the value of zeta. If zeta gets small, then this is going to be a deeper notch. And as omega or as zeta gets larger, when it gets to one half, we're actually going to be right at zero dB. So we could have two different shapes here depending on the value of zeta, or at least a, we could have a. It's a family of shapes, but uh, we can have something that looks like. For zeta being small, this is going to come along like this and then approach that asymptotically. And as zeta gets larger, it may do something that looks more like this, which looks sort of like a uh, real pole, or I'm sorry, a real zero. Okay, so the zeta actually has a lot of impact on what that's going to look like. In terms of the phase, it actually is a little bit more complicated. We've kind of gotten away with the phase being simple, but in this case, now we're going to have to pay a little more attention. So this is 180 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and this is zero. Okay, okay so first I'm going to mark my omega naught on here, and we'll mark... Uh, the values for omega naught over 10, omega naught over 10, and also 10 omega naught. Okay, so now this is going to work similar to the way it did for a simple zero, uh, except now we're going to go from zero to 180 degrees instead of zero to 90. Okay, so if we want to look at what our straight line approximations would be, we would go from uh, 0 to omega naught over 10, we'd have a straight line there, and then we would have 
going at 180 degrees from a mega knot, uh, uh, 10 omega knot uh, and higher in frequency. And then we would connect those by a straight line. Okay, so that's going to be our straight line approximation. And of course, we can put in sort of an S curve shape um, if we would like. That's going to, again, we want it to go through. 90 degrees here now at, at, at um, omega naught and so it's going to do something sort of like this and that's about the best I can approximate it and so that looks a lot like a simple zero only uh, again our, our phase changes from zero to plus 180 instead of zero to 90 but the interesting thing is when um, zeta gets small we're going to find that the use of these omega naught over 10 and, and 10 omega naught points really don't work very well. They're going to have to actually move in toward omega naught because what will happen is the phase approximation, and I'm going to take those things away just to keep my drawing from getting cluttered, but what will happen is as, omega, or as zeta gets small, this expression or this curve here is going to come in and it'll be a sharper transition. Still goes through 90 degrees at omega naught, but it'll certainly be sharper. And matter of fact, as zeta goes to zero, this actually becomes a discontinuity right here. But uh, anyway, so just keep in mind. So there's a family of curves for, if you remember up here, and for the phase that are functions of zeta. So you got to keep that in mind. Okay, the quadratic pole is going to be very much like the quadratic zero, except everything gets turned on its head. Uh, just for completeness, I'm going to go ahead and write out the magnitude expression. We're going to have h of j omega equals 1 divided by this expression that looks like the square root of the quantity 1 minus omega over omega naught squared and then that whole expression is squared, and then plus 2 zeta omega over omega naught quantity squared. Okay, so um, it's just a reciprocal of what we had for the zero. And the phase, Again, it's going to be the arc tangent, the same arc tangent that we had before, except we're going to have this negative in front of it. So don't forget that negative arc tangent of the quantity 2 zeta omega over omega naught divided by 1 minus omega over omega naught squared. Okay, so there is our angle function. Now, using arguments like we uh, did for the zero, we're going to talk about what happens at low frequency uh, relative to omega naught, at omega naught, and then at high frequency relative to omega naught. Okay, so I'll just summarize those here. So for omega much smaller than omega naught, we're going to have that the magnitude of h, I'm just going to shortcut it that way, in dB is going to be 0 dB. And the angle of H is going to be zero degrees. Okay, for omega equal omega naught, we're going to have the, uh, the magnitude of H in dB is equal 20 times the log base 10 of 1 over 2 zeta, which equals negative 20 times the log base 10 of 2 zeta. Now again, this is zeta dependent, and zeta is going to be non-negative. So if zeta is 0, then this log term is going to become negative infinity, and then we're flipping it with this sign here to be positive infinity. So again, it, it really does look like the 0 turned on its head. The angle of h, in this case, for omega equal omega naught is just going to be negative 90 degrees. 
It's not zeta dependent there. It's going to be negative 90 degrees at omega naught. Um, but the, uh, the sharpness of the slope in the phase curve is going to be dependent on zeta. And we'll draw that here in just a moment. When we have omega is much larger than omega naught, then the gain in dB is going to be 40 times the log base 10 of omega naught minus 40 times the log base 10 of omega. So again, we've got a constant term here and then one that rolls off at negative 40 dB per decade. And the phase is going to be minus 180 degrees. All right, so let's draw what this quadratic zero uh, Bode plot would look like. So we're going to go ahead and draw the axes. I'll go ahead and draw both axes here. So we're going to have the magnitude axis. Okay, and this is the gain in dB. And I'm drawing it this way because we know it's going to be going negative. And I'm going to draw the phase axis. Similar kind of thing going on. Okay, so this is the phase in degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and mark our omega naught point here. And we'll go ahead and mark it here. And I'll go ahead and mark the points at um, omega naught divided by 10 and 10 omega naught. Okay, so now we also, well, let me go ahead and label minus 180 degrees and minus 90 degrees here. Obviously this is zero and this is zero dB up here. Okay, so I'm going to draw our straight line approximation. Well, first we're going to come out from zero out to omega naught at zero dB. And then we're going to roll off at negative 40 dB per decade. Okay, so this slope will be negative 40 dB per decade. All right, so that means every time that our, fa our, ang our fa frequency increases by a factor of 10, the magnitude will be 40 dB lower. I'll go ahead and do the straight line approximation for the phase, and then we'll talk about how uh, our damping ratio affects things. So for phase, we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to come up to omega naught over 10 at 0 degrees, and then we're going to say at omega naught, 10 omega naught and higher, we're going to be at negative 180 degrees. And then I'm going to connect those two by a straight line. And we'll notice, at least to the best of my drawing ability, that at omega naught we should be at negative 90 degrees. All right, so now what is uh, zeta going to do here? When uh, zeta is large, uh, especially when it's greater than one half, we're going to find that uh, this is a pretty good approximation. But as zeta gets smaller, we're going to find out that uh, we're going to have essentially what amounts to here a peaking of our magnitude. And so when zeta gets small, we're going to come along and this is going to ramp, sort of spike up and then come down and asymptotically approach that negative 40 dB per decade uh, trace. And um, here what's going to happen is we're going to find that the ma the phase comes out here and actually crosses with a sharper transition like that. And again, the sharpness of that transition is going to depend on zeta itself. The smaller zeta gets, the sharper that transition will be. So here, again, is the uh, Bode plot of a uh, quadratic pole. All right, well, thanks for listening. So the next thing we're going to do in our discussion uh, in the next section is we're going to talk about how we add all these various pieces together to form a composite Bode plot, and then we'll work some examples. So thanks for listening, and have a good day.